Welcome to Gary Clark Tech with myself Gary Clark and in this recording I'm going to look at 8 new features in PHP 8 which I think you're going to love. Before we get into that some information first I record in high resolution so you don't have to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that works for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon and welcome. Quick check of my PHP version, as you can see I'm using PHP 8. If you're using a Mac and you've not yet upgraded, check out my video on how to do that also. I'm using PHP Storm so I'm going to set my PHP language level to 8 so that PHP Storm doesn't think I have a lot of syntax errors all over my code. So let's get into this. First off we'll have a quick win, a quick easy win. So we can now allow double colon to class on objects the same way we can do on the classes. I'll demonstrate this to you now. So I've got a class which I've just called demo class and I'm going to access class using double colon class. And so doing this I should be able to print out a string version of the namespace and the class name. The next thing I'll show you is match expression. So Whereas you currently have switch blocks which are quite clunky and if you want to set something to a variable you have to do it for each case. Match expression is much more streamlined and it's also more strict. So we'll print out the result of this switch block. The result is bar because that matches the value of 1. What about if I change the 1 to the string 1? What do you think will happen? Do you know the answer? We actually get the same thing because it's obviously using a double equals comparison rather than a stricter triple equals. So that can be a bit of a gotcha. I don't think it's ever got me because I don't often use switch blocks, to be honest. I think they're quite overused. Now let me show you how to replace this with something more slick. This is a match expression and I think you're going to like it. So I pass in the number, the same as I did with the switch block. And then inside of these curly braces, I create what is called an arm for each option. And as you can see, I'm using the double arrow operator. Very similar to assigning values in an array, but what I hope you've noticed is that I'm actually assigning the outcome or the output to a results variable, which I only have to do once. We'll try this with an integer one first. As you can see, we get bar back. Let's change this to a string. As you can see, I'm getting a red squiggle, so this should tell you this ain't going to work. Fatal error, uncaught, unhandled match error, unhandled match value of type string. Not only do the values have to match, but the types have to match also because we've got triple equals strict comparison. Here's something else that I really like about this. I can put more than one match value on one arm. So for foo, I'm going to have a choice of zero and one. And for bar, I'll leave that as two. Just to be clear, if the number is zero or one, we'll get foo back. And if the number is two, we'll get bar back. Let's test that out. So we get foo back because the number is zero, change that to one, run it again, foo, change it to two, run it again, bar. A lot of possibilities there, very powerful I think. Next up is constructor property promotion. Up to now in PHP, when you create a class you have to declare uh, the properties and then you have to pass them in through the constructor and then you assign them. We can clear out all of that stuff and do it all in one line. And this is how you do it. By simply adding a visibility keyword in front of each of these parameters, I turn it into a declaration, an assignment, and a constructor parameter all in one line. How cool is that? So there are some circumstances in which it won't work. For example, it won't work on abstract classes. So feel free to have a read of the documentation, or you can do what a lot of us do and just figure out what you can and can't get away with as you work along. I'll print something out here. I'm going to access one of the properties, the property Y, just to prove that it works. And there you go. I'll move these all onto their own lines, which is probably how most people are going to do this. And I'll just show you a couple of things to watch out for. So say, for example, I wanted to have a default of null. As you can see, angry red squiggle, because don't forget, this is now a declaration. So in order for this to be nullable, we have to make sure that it can be a nullable or float type. So we'll try this out. As you can see, cannot use null as a default value for parameter y of type float. So it needs to be of type null or float. And the way that we do that is we just go and prepend a question mark in front of our float type declaration. And hopefully this should work. There you go. Back to working. Again, property promotion isn't going to work in all circumstances, but check the docs or just figure it out as you go along. My favourite new addition to the language is named arguments. It's been a long time coming and it's something which is 
quite common in a lot of other languages. Let's have a look at how things work at the moment. So this is PHP's array fill function. It takes three parameters, start index, count and value. They all have to be passed in in that order. And for that reason, we call them positional arguments. But now we can actually use their name and pass them in in whatever order we like if we're using their name. And the syntax looks like this. It's the param name minus the dollar sign, followed by a colon, followed by a value. Let's run that. OK, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch around the order of these. So I'll put the start index at the end and we'll go and run it again. And it works exactly the same. Now you're probably thinking that we didn't actually gain much from that. We might as well have just passed everything in using positional arguments. But named arguments really come into their own when the functions have defaults. You probably know this function, HTML special chars. It takes four arguments, a string, and then it takes three arguments which have defaults. As you can see, the last argument, double encode, has a default of true. But if I was happy with the rest of the defaults, the flags, the encoding, but wanted to change double encoding to false, I would have to pass in values for those two other arguments, even if I was leaving them the same as the defaults, which sucks. Named arguments to the rescue. So let's have a uh, look at how we've had to do it up until now. I'll stick with the defaults which I've copied. And if I wanted to change any default values which came after that, such as the double encode here, I'd have to include those things. But now I can get rid of those. And all I have to do is just specify the name, double encode. And then let's go over to the terminal and test this out. OK, great, nothing broke, everything's working there. What you cannot do is this. Once you've used a named argument, you can't suddenly start trying to put positional arguments in there. That will not work. Cannot use positional argument after named argument. And just for clarification, anything that which isn't a named argument will be treated as a positional argument up until the point where you introduce a named argument. I'll make string a named argument just to get this working again. OK, all good there. The possibilities are endless really with named arguments, it gives us a lot more power and flexibility than what we had with just positional arguments. Here's a cool little trick which uh, might interest you. So say for example you've got something like HTML special chars, but you know that you're always going to want to set double encode to false. What you can do is create a little reducer function which wraps around the HTML special chars function. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I'll go and grab this stuff here, which I commented out and paste that in there. And so I've called this HTML special chars unencoded. And what this will do is return HTML special chars, but with double encode always set to false instead of the default, which is true. And therefore I can do the same thing, but I only need one argument for my function. That argument obviously being the string, which isn't a default. Let's test this out. So I'm going to set the return of HTML special chars unencoded to an unencoded variable. And I'm just going to pass in a random string over to the terminal. And there you go. Nothing breaks. It's still working. So that's named arguments. The one thing I'll say about named arguments is there is probably more to this than any of the other things I've shown you. So do check the docs. Next up is the null safe operator. So in this example here, I'm trying to get a country property off an address, which I try to get off a user, which I try to get off a session. Any of those three things could be null. So instead of having to go through this whole charade with all these if statements, with a null safe operator, we can actually do this. After each access attempt, I'm placing the question mark, which is checking for null. And if any of those things are null, then country will evaluate to null and no exceptions are thrown. It just works seamlessly. As you can see at the top there, I've set session to null. So it means when it gets to this bit, it's going to short circuit and country will become null. So user get address, it won't even get that file already be evaluated to null before then. So I'll remove the old stuff and let's try this out. So I'm just going to var dump country and let's go over to the terminal, run this. And as you can see, it's null. Now, ideally, I'd like to try out one of the things from the middle user or address. So how can I do this? What I'll do is I'll create an anonymous uh, session class and I'll have a user property on that, which I'll set to null. I think that should do the trick for us. So public user equals null. So what I'm expecting to happen here is it'll get past session because that has a value. However, user is null and it should short circuit there, which it does. And the whole expression evaluates to null. 
So that's an old safe operator and I like it. Next up we have union types. So at the moment if you want to type in anything we're only really able to specify one type plus null. If we want to be able to say that something can be int or float we have to do it in the dot blocks like we've done here but that doesn't actually offer you any protection. That's more like just for information. And I'll demonstrate exactly what I mean by setting this number to a string. So the dot block says it should be an integer or a float. What I'm actually going to do is just set it to the string foo. No exceptions will be thrown, it will just set it to whatever I want it to be set to. So set number foo and then we'll just print out number get number. And then we'll go over to the terminal and have a look. And there you go. So our doc block really is just that, it's just documentation. It doesn't actually enforce anything, but with union types we can now do this. I'm going to get rid of all my dot blocks and I'm going to grab the types and I'm going to use them as type hints. This is a total double win because not only is PHP going to check that we have the right types, we also have self-documenting code. If you're starting to feel emotional right now, I totally understand. So I'm going to leave the set number to a string and we'll go over to the terminal, run that, and we get an error. Argument number one, number must be of type int or float. So let's change it to an integer and we'll go back and check that works this time. Let's change it to a float. Perfect. Okay, now what if you want this to be optionally null? Well, you can't actually do this. You can't place a question mark in front. Neither can you wrap it in brackets and place a question mark in front. There may be a proposal for that, but it won't work at the moment. What you have to do is be explicit and just add null as another type, the same way as we've done for int and float. So number I'll need to change this and also make this nullable. So that means I should now be able to set this to null. I'll change my print to vardup so that we can see it. Over to the terminal, let's go and have a look. Null, there you go. Union types is excellent, I think. Next one is string contains. I think this one's been a long time coming. If you wanted to see if a string contained another string up till now, you've had to use string pos or a combination of other things. Now you can do this, which semantically is a huge improvement. So I'm just checking if needle is in the obligatory haystack. Now we'll go over to the terminal and it should say found or not found. That's not found, so I need to come up with a string which is in haystack. So stack, back over to the terminal found okay excellent we also have string starts with and string ends with so can you guess what these do again semantically a lot better first i'll check if haystack starts with stack and if it does or if it does not I'll print out a message does not start with stack so i'll change this to hey back over to the terminal does start with i'm pretty sure you figure this out by now but we'll do string ends with just to be thorough so does haystack end with hey i'll just tweak these feedback messages does not end with let's change it to stack back to the terminal does end with so there's eight things which i hope you love about php 8 i think that the language continues to go from strength to strength which means that your code will go from strength to strength too I'm hoping we can get some discussion about a topic going on down in the comments below. If you want to get involved, tell me which new features you like. Have you used PHP 8 so far? If so, how have you found it? Is there anything you can share that will help other PHP users like yourself? It would be great to hear from you and I always look forward to reading comments. If you've enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a like and don't hesitate to share if you want to help others. And if you want YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new material at least two times a week and details of my schedule can be found on the discussion tab of my YouTube channel homepage.